QNAP is bringing sexy back. And by sexy, I mean geek beat. Four days a week, baby. I'm John P. And I'm dead sexy. This episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by QNAP. Network storage made awesome. You heard it right. Thanks to QNAP. We're pushing the Geek Beat Daily Show back up to four days a week, which means you can now get your daily dose of awesome with our short daily shows Monday through Thursday and cap off the week with our live show every Friday. And that's on top of the constant stream of updates you'll get if you're following Geek Beat, Cali, myself on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, RSS, whatever. So right now, just take a second to tweet this, at QNAP underscore Naz. Thanks for giving us more at Geek Beat TV. They'll love it, I'm telling you right now. All right, let's get to the news. Today I'm gonna do something very rare. I'm gonna caution you about a Kickstarter project we covered yesterday. I'm not saying you shouldn't support it, but I wanna make sure you think it through because there's a lot of questions yet to be answered. Paul Dixon wrote up a post that I shared on social media about the Pocket Drone Tricopter. It's a completely awesome sounding Kickstarter project that checks off all the major points anyone might desire. It folds up to fit in a bag, it can be controlled with an Android tablet and guided by GPS. It'll follow you like a little puppy. It can carry a GoPro and the video looks really great. So what's the problem? Well, at 500 bucks, I'm worried that they're overselling the simplicity of using this device. I sent an email to the folks behind the project with a bunch of questions yesterday, and I'm still waiting for answers. So here are some things to consider before dropping half a grand in support of the project. First of all, their original funding goal was 35,000. They're at about 1,000% of that now with 45 days to go. This is one of those projects that could break a million dollars. And when this happens to other projects in the past, they're kind of unprepared to ramp up the volume without some extreme delays. So although they promised a June 2014 delivery date, it wouldn't be unusual to see that delivery date slip for a very long time. And if it takes them the better part of a year to deliver, there may very well be other competitors hit the market during that time while you're waiting. We don't see any details on the controller that comes with the copter. There's no details about the Android tablet, how it will use it, how to use the GPS functionality, how the device will perform indoors or in urban areas where power lines are present. Those tend to throw off the GPS. I'd like to know how the automatic follow feature is implemented, how the orientation independent flight works, and how fast it can travel. The list of questions I send is a lot more detailed than that, but Take it from a guy who spent a lot of money on radio controlled toys, this thing might be a lot more difficult to use than it sounds in the promotional video. I'm hoping they'll loan me a prototype so I can really report back firsthand to make a strong buy or don't buy recommendation. And I'll let you know if they get back to me with answers to the questions. But as of this moment, I haven't backed the project yet. Speaking of projects, you guys remember the giant solar array that I put on my house, right? Well, we discovered the hard way that when the power to the grid goes out, the solar array turns itself off, even if it's a sunny day. It does that to theoretically protect itself, but we lose power. So I decided to get a new whole house Generac backup gas generator. The one I got puts out 20 kilowatts and it will kick in within seconds whenever the power goes out, which is awesome. The bad news? The generator alone costs about $5,000. And what I didn't realize at the time was that it looked like installation is gonna be at least another five or $6,000. So as I did with the solar array, I'm going to document the heck out of the generator install and then I'll share it with you guys once I know what's actually going on. Aren't you glad I'm your guinea pig? Well, when it comes to QNAP, I'm certainly glad that I'm your guinea pig because they sent me the new HS210 fanless NAS before we went off to CES, and I've been playing with it a lot. We're gonna bring you guys a whole series of tutorials soon on everything these babies will do, but there's no need to wait for that if you're in the market for, for some additional storage space. Go ahead and pick up a QNAP HS210 if you can even get one because they can't keep them in stock. And also grab a couple Western Digital Red three terabyte drives 
to stick in there, or get the Hitachi HDST 4 terabyte drives, which Backblaze says are the most reliable out of their 28,000 drives. We'll have links in the show notes. Back to the QNAP 210. You aren't going to believe everything this little thing can do. The setup process is amazingly simple. You can share files. You can use it with Windows or Apple Time Machine backups. It serves your media collection. Use it as a surveillance station, set up a private cloud, and much, much more. Head over to QNAP.com, click on Features, and prepare to have your mind blown. Oh, I feel a bit of a headache coming on, Dave. Now is the time when I get to say I told you so like a hundred times even. For the last couple of years, as all of these new smart devices have been coming out, I've been saying they look great, but they're inherently insecure. No one is paying attention to the developing anti-malware apps for them. Well, guess what? Now they're getting hacked, Dave. That's right. According to security firm Proofpoint, the first proven Internet of Things based cyber attack, cyber attack has taken place, involving more than 750,000 emails coming from more than 100,000 consumer gadgets like routers, DVD players, televisions, and at least one fridge. That we know of. That's right. That's right, folks. You now have to worry about having a house full of zombie appliances. And the worst thing of all is that appliance manufacturers almost never put out firmware updates. So they'll sell you a $3,000 fridge with an Android touch interface, but they are never going to update you to the latest Android OS. And you aren't going to have access to the Play Store either. Your fridge is just going to have to be permanently disconnected from the internet, leaving you with an expensive and painful reminder. So don't buy smart ovens and dishwashers and things. Soon they'll all be part of Skynet and it's only a matter of time before the blenders start killing people. Okay. Okay, we're almost out of the first batch of par bad parking cards. There are only a few boxes left, and these are the extremely overstuffed ones where we promise like 250, but they come with more like 350 to 400. We did order a new batch, which will be ready in two or three weeks, but when those come, we're actually going to be putting them in boxes of 250. So we have to pretty much do this because the shipping is killing us. The variation in weight caused us to have to go through all kinds of crap with the post office and even a problem with trying to get a UPC code and trying to get Amazon to fulfill orders and all kinds of other things I never dreamed of. So the bottom line is go to badparkingcards.com and it'll take you to the Amazon page where you can get the last of the oversized batch. Well, that's the last of my oversized batch. I'll, ah! I'll see you guys later. I don't know what the deal is, Dave. For some reason, I kind of feel like my head's going to explode. <laughs>